I was drafted out of the University of Georgia in 2005. I was able to hear the Atlanta Braves have draft number whatever, and they select Will Startup. And I thought I heard my name, but uh, I had to listen for it for the second time. It was just a major accomplishment in my life. It's what I wanted to do. It was another opportunity to pursue my dream. And the icing on the cake was, it was with the organization that I grew up cheering for. I got an opportunity to play independent baseball in Sugarland, Texas. Independent baseball is really where players go to try to extend their career. It's a wonderful place to play because there are guys fighting for their careers, playing because they love baseball, and uh, you don't really play independent baseball to pass the time. And we had a rare off day, and we were walking out of the mall to go watch the Astros play a game and my phone rang. Throughout the week, I had called my mother-in-law to check on Copeland. And so my mother-in-law called me and I answered. What I was told is that, uh, Will, I need you to get on an airplane. Uh, Copeland, Copeland has passed out. I was by myself, but I just started walking aimlessly trying to find my car. And she was in Virginia, which is a nine-hour drive. And they said, we're going to try to get you a flight out, but there wasn't any more flights. And so I started driving home. It was almost like somebody pressed the slow motion button on life. And it just sounded like muffled noises all around me. So I remember talking with my mom on the way down there, and I said, I am not going to be able to get home unless you are straight up honest with me. And she said, to be honest, he's being med flighted to Atlanta and I don't know if he's alive or not. There was Copeland, uh, heavily sedated, hooked up on, I couldn't count how many tubes. There were so many emotions of being angry at the Lord and saying, this isn't what I want. What happened with Copeland, he experienced a cardiopulmonary arrest, and he was probably without oxygen for 10 minutes, even as they did CPR. After the MRI on his brain, it showed up that he had a global diffuse uh, brain damage, which means his entire brain was hit, and it knocked out his ability to walk, uh, his ability to talk. I fall asleep, and the next morning I hop into his uh, bed, his hospital bed, and I curled up and you know you kind of have to shimmy around all the tubes and cords and I just grabbed a, a toy that uh, was like, uh, had so many lights on it and animals and did so many things and I just turned it on and I uh, held it in front of his face and then he said blue and he said monkey and he said tree and he was describing everything he was seeing. I laid Copeland in his crib and I said, Lord, I cannot fear for the rest of my life that he's not gonna wake up. And I trust you with him. And that was such a powerful moment because I did relinquish control. What Copeland received was a pacemaker defibrillator inside of him in case maybe an event like this ever happened again. It was just late one night after a game and I kind of got another one of those messages in the clubhouse. Everything's okay, uh, but you need to come outside. What we learned was that Copeland uh, had had another event where his heart stopped and the pacemaker detected it and the defibrillator shocked his heart back into rhythm. There are still moments when I'll get wrapped up in the fear but then just reminding myself that God is good and that He loves Copeland more than I do. And I would never sign up for what happened to my son. I would never say, volunteer me. But I get to look in my son's eyes now on a daily basis and tell him, Copeland, I am so glad you're alive. <laughs>